Should have had a hive tool. I retired from the Army in 74 and came back here. About two months later, one of my neighbors called and said they had a swarm of bees. Did I want them? And I picked those up, and that's how I got started. The first year, I wound up with about 13. Then the next year, I went up to about 40. And the biggest problem holding you back was getting the boxes put together to put them in. I continued on until I got up about uh, 700. I sold and traded and uh, maneuvered around. I've gotten completely out of it three times and come back, pick up more, and get started. If somebody sells bees, I buy them. And so I'm, I'm still trying to run about 100. These uh, bees died over the winter. They were full of bees when we put them here, and now it's empty. There's just a few dead bees down in the center of it. The uh, disease that we have, the pests that we have, the insecticides that we have now, uh, and, and so many people are unaware of the consequences of using so many chemicals. They're such a delicate insect, and I, I think there's, there's too many chemicals and too much pesticide in the environment now because of the average homeowner. You can see how, how many chemicals I spray around here. I just let everything go. Well, I know they didn't starve to death. I had two cases last summer where I went to look at bees that were in structures, and when I told the people what was involved with getting them out and that there would be a fee, they never got back with me, and I discovered that they had gone in and sprayed them, because it's cheaper. Now, what a waste. Without the bees, uh we probably wouldn't have anything to eat very long. We are so dependent on the insects for pollination and a lot of things, the honeybee is the only thing that really we have available for it. Okay, we'll go open up this hive here and take a look. This is the critical time of the year. Most bees coming through the winter are lost probably in the month of February and March. The biggest thing that happens going forward at this point, if you're not overwhelmed with mites, is the bees start to raise brood. They have to feed the brood and they may run out of food and starve to death. So you've got to be looking at your hives and knowing what's going on. This is exactly why I've been putting in the winter patties, is to feed the bees to make sure they don't run out of food. And, and we'll probably now have to feed clear through the rest of the spring to keep the buildup going. Otherwise, we'll lose the bees. The area, the, the climate, is what does so much, has to do with what, what you can get done, really. Last year, we had tremendous amount of hot weather in August where the uh, forage, where I had the bees up in the mountains, it dried up. There was absolutely nothing up there for the bees to work. You see outside now, our trees are blooming in February, which normally wouldn't be until late March or April here. Insects and animals will evolve, but how fast can they evolve? This is a pecan tree. 
and we live in the Northwest, and pecan trees didn't used to live up where it gets cold and where you get frost. Eventually, everything's going to evolve around climate change. Polar bears probably won't. We'll probably lose them because they depend on the Arctic. They hunt seals. You know, what are you going to do, feed them chickens? This one hive is, uh, we only got a few in here and I'm worried about it. Our, our hive population compared to the 1950s to, to, to today are probably about 50% because around the late 40s, early 50s, we probably had close to 4 million hives in this country. Today, they figure there's about two million hives in this country. There wasn't any real issues in keeping your bees alive. The main thing that you needed to do was have plenty of honey in the hives so that they could make it through the winter. And our hive loss was pretty insignificant. So that's, that's what it was like back then. We didn't have all the issues and problems that we're experiencing today. You realize that you can't keep all of them going. Uh, I don't believe in doing like a lot of people are starting to think is they're going to die anyway, so go ahead and take all the honey and kill them or whatever. Let them die in the fall and put new bees in because it's more economical. Here it takes about uh, 80 pounds of honey to winter a colony, 100 pounds of sugar, and the work fixing it up or the corn syrup they have to buy to feed them. It's, it's not worth it. It's cheaper to buy the bees. I don't go to that extreme. I try to keep all of them alive I can. The bees are just like a family. You know, you don't name each one of them, but you have 10 families of bees side by side, and one of them's bringing in pollen from this plant, so you know it's working fireweed, for example. This one is working nothing but blackberry. Over here, clover, whatever. Uh, they're they're individualist in in one sense, and uh, it, it's such a cohesive group uh, family that uh, you just can't get away from it. Hopefully, I've got more in the bottom box. We're going to go ahead and get started. It's really nice to see all of you here. I hope all your bees are doing good. You've been seeing them bring in a lot of pollen, I hope. Let's start talking a little bit about what you think the issues are with the bees right now, and do you think weather and climate is affecting those issues? I wanted to talk about the drought last summer. California got no honey. Uh, I really didn't, which is unusual for us up here. We're the rainiest place. We're well known. Seattle area, rain, we're legendary. And so to have a drought up here, California, not getting any honey, that's climate change. Mm -hmm. We have all these problems with our bees. We have the mite problems. We have the disease problems. And then the concerns of pesticides, not enough forage. Now climate change on top of that. I think it's always changing. It's kind of a pendulum swinging. Uh, I also think there's not a whole lot we're going to be able to do about it. Whether we get a drought, whether we have El Nino, and then we have to adapt to make sure our bees make it through. And it's been so mild over the winter that the bees don't really cluster down mm -hmm. the way they used to. And so they're going through a lot more food because they're more active. There's really nothing blooming right now. In my bees, any time the weather has been 48 degrees or so, they're out. And there might not be any food, but they're out. And so I've been feeding since November. And people are telling me, well, I've never seen it this warm, you know? Mm -hmm. We're never getting pollen this early, so I'm confused about what to do. This year, my bees survived, but I had a horrible moisture problem because I had everything closed up so tight trying to keep the hornets out that the moisture got them. So for me, that's, I, I believe that is part of the climate issue. Let's say we adapt our style to this new system right now. Like, okay, we're getting these early springs, and so we check our bees earlier, we make nukes earlier, maybe are able to deliver queens earlier. But then it changes again, it, you know. It, it might just be too much. Is that the tipping point? 